open world RPGs have been popular since the early 2010s and amazingly some of the highly regarded games of the genre are all available on the Switch. Zelda Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, Skyrim, Dragon's Dogma, and the famed third entry of the Witcher franchise. A game with a fun nickname in the community. Here is my review of The Switcher 3, I mean The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt for the Nintendo Switch. When it comes to story, Wild Hunt is about Geralt, a mutated and trained monster hunter known as a Witcher. Geralt is searching for his surrogate daughter, Ciri, as she's being chased by dimension-hopping wraiths known as the Wild Hunt. He goes to many familiar locales of the franchise and finds out from the people there what Ciri has been up to. Now, this is also a largely narrative-driven story. It's very cinematic, and while it starts off a bit intimidating, once it sucks you in, it's hard to get out. There's a lot of lore and good storytelling to everything in this game. Even the side quests that have nothing to do with Ciri and Geralt have great storytelling. And it's worth noting that you don't need prior knowledge of the series to be able to play this game. You don't need to play the two games, you don't need to read the books, you don't need to watch the Netflix TV series. There will be references to most of that stuff, like ways to simulate Witcher 2 save data, but everything you need to know about Wild Hunt is told within Wild Hunt's story. When it comes to gameplay, this is an open world action RPG with hack and slash combat and lots of crafting. As you play, you'll explore vast regions, fight monsters with swordplay and magic, and craft lots of things from armor and weapons to oils and potions to enhance your gear. Now Witcher 3 for the Switch is almost feature for feature the same as the other platform. It's got all the same DLC expansions with Hearts of Stone and Blood and Wine. The only reason it isn't feature for feature anymore was because of the next gen update the Switch got a couple weeks ago. We got the bulk of the new additions like Netflix series cosmetics, cross save progression, map filters, and quick casting, but the Switch did not get photo mode or the ability to pause during cutscenes. And before diving into main progression, it's worth noting that The Witcher 3 technically isn't a true open world experience. You explore regions of the game's world, but have to fast travel between them, technically making this a semi or segmented open world game. But moving on, since this game is open world, there's a lot you can do by just running around, like unlocking fast travel points, accepting contracts to take on mini bosses, playing the Gwent card game, and of course, what I'm sure most of you want to do, Go find and have a fun time with a prostitute. But oddly enough, questing is the main focus of the game, shown pretty early on with the fact that some areas won't let you in until a certain part of the main storyline. And that's really what we need to talk about. The Witcher 3 has a very focused and expansive plotline. If you look at Bethesda games like Skyrim or Fallout 4, you get a story mostly focused around different factions and then them coming together later. Wild Hunt mostly has one main storyline that is longer, more in depth, and focused than most other open world games. You do go on long plot lines for the NPCs in each region as they know what Ciri's been up to and won't tell Geralt until he helps them. Making the Witcher go from tracking his surrogate daughter down to becoming involved in a domestic case that turns into insanity with secluded orphans, godlings, and horrific abominations masquerading around as divinity. But it all circles back to Ciri having you go through playable flashbacks later on showing how that plotline you just went through was connected to what Ciri did in the region. Now at first I found this a little frustrating. A constant repetitive game of, oh I know what you want, but you're gonna do something for me first by going to this person and then this person and five favors later I'll tell you what Ciri did there. But once I'd done a few of them, and the fact that the second and third areas of the game don't have you do a million favors for one part of the story and repeat that for two other parts, I realized that these stories are really well done and I got as pulled into them as I did with what Siri was actually doing. That's also where things get a little insane and crazy. A lot of this game's side content is not as consequential to the main story outside of the epilogue, but it's just as in-depth. I get these two little side missions to help a Jarl son and daughter deal with a curse and monster, and it turns into a multi-hour cinematic journey that ends with Geralt influencing who the new leader of the country is. But let's get on to more gameplay-oriented things. The Witcher 3 is kind of like Skyrim if you want to make that comparison, but third person all the time and give the combat a more fast-paced hack and slash feel, with the swordplay more focused on guarding and parrying the further you get into the story. There will be times where you can run in and just mash Y to deal damage to opponents that don't have weapons, but a lot of the later stuff, especially the final few boss fights, you're going to need to know how to do sidesteps and dodges to create openings. The game's also got a large emphasis on battle preparation with you being able to craft and make potions and oils for enhancements, 
plus different ones for different types of enemies. As you can expect, you're going to be collecting a lot of items for this, and thankfully, the developers were smart and kind to the players. You do have weight capacity, but almost everything that isn't weapons and armor weighs absolutely nothing at all with an upgradable saddlebag for your horse. All you really have to worry about with carry weight is extra equipment. The combat is a lot of fun to get into as well. Even if you do use easy mode where parrying isn't as required, running up to bandits or wolves and just going to town with your silver swords is a ton of fun to do. Especially when you get NPCs that are bullying people around, acting like they're tough and Geralt just dismembers them in mere seconds. And that's pretty much everything for gameplay, so let's talk about content and length, and this is one of those games where asking for length will give you a myriad of misleading answers. If I go out and ask someone, how long is The Witcher 3's story, I'll get answers like, well, I spent at least 100 hours in the first region and at least 50 or 60 in each of the other two regions. But that's really more on how long does it take to do every main quest and side quest and contract and point of interest, etc, etc. In all reality, focusing on the main story while doing a side quest here and there will get you to the end of the game in around 50 to 55 hours with at least that much content afterwards if you want to do DLC, side quests, or new game plus. Now for presentation, the most important part of this game on the Switch. Witcher 3 on the go was a tall order and didn't end up perfect, but they pulled it off. Visually, the game looks great and a little rough at the same time. A lot of the environments are jaggy far away, and there will almost always be a bit of a jagged outline around Geralt during the daytime. But cutscenes look really good and detailed, and the lighting in this game is really well done with accurate shadows and tons of different lighting levels and effects as you wander around. Then we get to performance, and there's a lot to talk about here. First of all, you have a bunch of graphical options on the Switch. Foliage distance, motion blur, depth of field, anti-aliasing. You can turn all this stuff off, which will make the game look worse, but you won't drop frames as often. The game also utilizes handheld mode very well, reducing a lot of the foliage on screen while you're on the go to further improve performance. Speaking of, this game tries to stay at 30 FPS and does for a lot of the game, but not all of it. Exploring the open world and fighting in big busy areas will have frequent dips into the 20s, not far down into the 20s, but it will happen. And this is an impressive feat because of what it is. The Witcher 3 is a gigantic game, and even on the base PS4, it can't run at a consistent 30 FPS. The fact that Saber Interactive got the Switch version just a small step behind what the base PS4 can do is impressive, and is a big reason for why this port is so highly regarded. The major downside here is not the frame rate, but load times. They're pretty long, clocking in at a full minute of waiting sometimes when you load into a new area or load your save file. And for the sake of comparison, because I'm sure a lot of you are very aware from the last video I uploaded, it is known that the game runs much higher and better on the Steam Deck handheld PC. On that handheld, you can easily get a consistent 30 to 40 FPS with decently higher graphical fidelity and loading sequences of a mere 5 to 10 seconds. But the biggest difference for a handheld gamer is here. Let's dive into battery life, something that you only get about 1-2 to two hours of on the deck. The Witcher 3 gives the Nintendo Switch Original and Lite models a battery range of 3-4.5 to four and a half hours, and the V2 and OLED models get 5.5-7.5 to seven and a half hours. Now, in conclusion, The Witcher 3 has been on the Switch for a while now and still remains one of the most ambitious and impressive ports despite not being perfect. On the downside, there are still frame drops into the mid-20s and the game doesn't look fantastic graphically on larger screens. But what many regard to be one of the greatest open world RPGs of all time was made to work on the Switch and is just as immersive and fun. If you can stand the long load times, it's a game worth playing or perhaps replaying with the recently added quality of life changes from the next generation patch. Reviews to Go rates The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt for the Nintendo Switch an 8 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.